Restoring a Vintage Bike Part 2. Hi guys, I'm Dan at VintageVelo.org and today we are doing the second part in our Vintage Bike Restoration series. Uh, today we are prepping and painting uh, our Vintage Lejeune bike. Um, now, um, I've had a little bit of a clean up and a closer look at it. I've given it a good uh, clean um, uh, with detergent and uh, then a little bit of degreasant um, and I can really see what I'm tackling. Um, as I mentioned in the first video, uh, the paint itself is very, very thin. There's a white undercoat, uh, which is good, but the red color coat, the top coat is incredibly thin. Um, I've already cleaned up the forks um, and taken the decals off. Um, it all cleans up okay. Um, it's just, there's not a lot of paint on here. Um, the things I have to tackle um, underneath where I took off uh, some of the decals, uh, there's some uh, surface damage and tiny bits of rust um, and a few little areas, especially chain slap areas and around here uh, by the dropouts, uh, they need some attention as well. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to use some um, uh, medium um, sandpaper um, before I move on to something a bit finer just to tackle those difficult areas. Um, I'm not taking this all the way back to bare metal because we're going to be repainting it in red. Um, I'm going to leave the original paint on there but I'm going to key it up nicely uh, and then we'll go over it with some etch primer um, and then uh, colour from there. Um, but because it's red on red, going to leave it uh, as it is. Did find, however, there were some uh, gold lug lining, uh, which was nice. Um, also, interesting little detail just on the underside of the frame just here. Uh, they've actually put uh, nice notches underneath um, to, uh, to stop the... Um, uh, cable, the uh, gear changes from dropping down um, when they're pulled on. Um, it holds everything in nice and tight, which is great. I like that. Nice little touch. Um, interesting thing, although it is uh, Reynolds 531, I did notice a seam in the uh, um, steerer tube, which is a bit strange. So obviously uh, uh, not entirely 531. I had a good look inside. Um, certainly the uh, the rest of the chase days, the tubes, they're all 531. Uh, as are the uh, the forks, but there we go. One of those little anomalies uh, that happens in the factory. So we're going to get straight on um, and uh, get prepping this frame. All rubbed down, uh, ready to go. Um, as ever, there was a lot more rubbing down to be done uh, than I expected. Um, it's usually the case with this kind of a frame. The moisture had got underneath those little chips a bit more than I expected. And as you're taking it back, you just have to go further to get a nice feathered edge and to uh, chase out all of the, uh, the paint damage. Um, but it's now ready to go. I didn't find anything horrendous while I was down there. Um, now, the paints we're going to use, uh, first off, um, it will be uh, aerosols, but they're not really aerosols like you think it. Um, these are not the kind of thing you go and buy in the supermarket or anything like that. Um, what I like, um, I like to use um, these kind of things. Um, now these are automotive paints um, that are, um, you order direct from automotive paint suppliers. Um, you give them the paint code or the rail code uh, and they mix it, thin it right there and then, and then put it into uh, the aerosol, pressurize it, and you've got it there ready to go. So it's effectively the same as shooting it from a gun, except it's in an aerosol. There's quite a difference between one of these and a regular shot bought can. Um, I would always recommend go for these. Look on uh, Google, they're all over the place, these kind of guys, um, and they are way, way better uh, than the regular stuff. Also, primers, always use an etch primer, and with your um, 2K lacquer, uh, you're looking for a can like this, which has got a bit on the bottom there. You take off and a little thing down here. Now what that does, uh, a proper 2K lacquer, it's two part, um, and you have to uh, mix it uh, inside the can uh, before you uh, shoot it. Uh, and what you have there, you pull that out and it releases the, um, the hardener inside the can. Then you give it a good shake and then you're ready to go. Okay, um, but then it hardens in the can, you've got to use it and then it's dead. Um, but always look for that. That's a proper 2K lacquer and it's nice and hard. Okay, so that's an important thing. Um, but uh, we've degreased this nicely. I'm gonna move uh, next door. It's a nice warm day today. So normally I paint outside, um, but it's very windy. So we're gonna be painting inside. So see me in a moment. 
Before we spray our first coat of Edge Primer, things to note, uh, I'm inside because it's windy, so I'm very, very close to the door. Uh, it's fully open, there's nice airflow in here, and I've got my correct mask uh, for spraying. No little paper mask, dust mask, those will not do. Get one of these, again, eBay, cheap, very, very good saves your lungs. Uh, also of note, uh, one thing about spraying aerosols, um, although these are uh, car paint aerosols, they can sometimes, because they've been pre-mixed uh, with the thinner, they can sometimes take a little bit longer to go off. Um, so um, the, uh, the actual procedure for painting these is pretty straightforward, just sometimes your drying time is a little longer. What we're going to do, a uh, little coat of etch primer, um, and then we'll be going on with some white primer uh, for a coat or two, um, and then one thin coat of red top coat. Okay, um, then we stop. The thin coat of top coat, not really a top coat, it's a guide coat, because I'm gonna be rubbing it down after that. And that guide coat will allow me to see any imperfections as I rub it back. So uh, let's get going. We'll be having half an hour between coats. Um, so half hour for the etch, half hour for each of the primers, half hour for the guide coat. Then we stop, wait two hours for it to harden a bit, then we're gonna rub down. So let's get this going. Now the frame's had a couple of hours to harden. Uh, it's not fully hardened yet, so we've got to be quite careful, the paint's still soft. Um, and what we're gonna do now, we're gonna use some P1200 uh, wet and dry uh, all over this to really flat it back. And uh, now what I'm trying to do, the red that's on there at the moment is literally just a guide coat. If I go through that, that's not a problem. I wanna see as I go through that, uh, any imperfections or anything underneath that white, um, undercoat will stand out um, underneath the red if I go uh, as I take that back so I can tell if I'm going far enough uh, on the flatting back um, but at the moment it's all looking good um, and we'll just uh, go through that process flat this nicely with the P1200 then another couple of coats of colour on there and we're going to leave it for two weeks before we do anything else okay great So that's had a few weeks to harden. Um, I'm very happy with the results so far. Don't worry if it looks a bit flat. This is a base coat color. Um, it's designed to have a lacquer over the top. So it's usually a, a kind of flat matte color at this stage. Um, so don't panic um, about that. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna apply the decals um, and we're gonna do that nice and carefully. And then we're gonna go over the top uh, with our 2K lacquer. Um, now. Obviously, before you took the old um, decals off, uh, you took photographs. Um, very handy, it's a few weeks ago. I can't remember what, where they went, but I took photographs on the phone um, and uh, I can use those simply as reference so I get the decals in the correct place. Uh, also, when you're putting them on, um, small ones, they kind of they deal with themselves, it's not too hard. 
bigger ones, we've got some almost like three quarter wrap around decals around um, some of the tubing on this one. Um, simple trick, um, water sprayer with water with a little bit of um, washing up liquid in. Spray that on just a little bit first. That moisture will allow you an element of movement and makes it much, much easier to get out any air bubbles. Uh, you don't have to go crazy on that. And once you've got it on there, you can wipe it. And if you've got any lifting just on the edges of the decal, give it a few minutes, then you can press those down. But it really does make a big difference, okay? And also at this stage, make sure you're gloved up because you're handling a bare frame still. That's the decals on there. Not a complicated set, so quite straightforward. Uh, next up, uh, we will be using our 2K clear coat lacquer. Uh, you should have, as I mentioned before, the twist and turn uh, pull out for releasing the hardener of the lacquer. If you don't have that, then it's not really a 2K lacquer. The real ones, the real deal has that at the bottom that will harden up nicely over time. If you want that durable high gloss finish, this is the one to go for. Um, I'm gonna be putting on probably two coats today. I'll check it, uh, half hour between coats, I'll check it later. Maybe tomorrow one final coat, but we'll see how the gloss looks.